Wolfgang Steinbauer. Um, I have two roles at NXP. On the one hand, CTO for NXP Austria, as well as running the global crypto and security organization for NXP. Thank you very much. Great to meet you. Uh, my name is Stefan Mangert. I'm professor in cybersecurity at Graz University of Technology. Uh, and we, we recently also founded a, a research center together uh, with SGS at the cybersecurity campus Graz. So this is also a second role that I have. It's uh, scientific director, managing director of Lamar Security Research. Cool. Great to have you here. Michael. Ah, I'm Michael Gebetsreiter. I'm the CEO and owner of the company MGIT GmbH. And we are doing um, security in, in the enterprises. Cool. Thank you very much. Marcus. Hello, my name is Markus Seme. I am uh, part of the management team of Bearing Point Austria. And um, for everybody that does not know who Bearing Point is, uh, we are one of the biggest uh, technology consultants in, in Austria. And um, within Austria, I am responsible for all those service lines and services which are not directly dedicated to software development. Thank you very much. Heinz. Good afternoon. My name is Heinz Meyer. You are name research. I'm uh, CEO of uh, the company since uh, September 2021. Um, my former job was director of the uh, institute called Digital. Digital is, uh, is an acronym for uh, various uh, technologies. Uh, intelligent sensors is one part, as well as cyber security. Cool. Thank you very much for joining. Now, Cybersecurity. We want to specifically talk about how can we protect our future with electronic based systems and how can cybersecurity help us on that? Yeah, we have about 40 minutes to save the world with the help of cybersecurity. Um, out of interest, well, what is, just, just, just take a huge step back, what is cybersecurity? Just maybe we can put a name on it. Usually that's where it all goes mayhem when people have to actually define what it is. Cybersecurity. Who wants to tell me what that is? This is a part of the lecture we give in the fifth semester, yeah? Great. Introduction to information security. For everybody who, who wants to join that, it's welcome. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I will not do a, a, a very formal definition. Uh, there are plenty of definitions with respect to confidentiality, authenticity, and so on, but in the end, it's about that the data stays where it should be, right? So there is always an intention. The intuitive uh, argumentation is always you have an intention of who should be able to do what, and uh, you want to make sure that this holds in all your systems, in particular in all the tiny little things that grow in, our, in the environment, let's say, the, these EBS systems that we carry around with ourselves. I like that. So cyber security is about making sure that the data stays where it should belong. Mm, the data, not the access to data. Mm -hmm. It's also the environments where we treat data. Mm -hmm. So it, it's quite a broad term, I would say. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just to stay on that level, just for the fun of it, um, what are some of the main challenges in cybersecurity? I know it's like a basic question, but I love that. Uh, the, the, the main problem is we, we are not at the level where we want to be, right? So, so, so uh, currently we have the situation that we, uh, if, we, if we buy a smart TV or whatever device we buy, we, um, we, we cannot be sure that this thing is secure, or there is not a label on it, or whatever, or we press a button, this is now please secure, or uh, I can't add security on top of a design. So this is the, 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 the main problem we're actually facing. Right? So this also holds for production machines, wherever, <coughs> whatever sites you have, you have tons of devices, um, and it's a tremendously difficult question to answer, is this thing secure? Right? And this is actually one of our, main research questions that drives us, right? What, what, what do you need to do to, in order to be able to answer that question in the end? Uh, and, in, and in addition, what means secure? Uh, what, what level of security? Uh, security at a certain point in time over the lifetime of a product. We are faced with devices which are out in the field there 15, 20 years, and we still need to somehow keep them secure. So what are the methods, the concepts we we have to implement to ensure the security over the lifetime. Mm -hmm. So these are quite, quite interesting questions. 
I quite like that over the lifetime. So it's not just instant. You were just going to add something to it. Yeah, no, I just wanted to add something in addition because something that is also very important is security for whom. Right, because you, in, in every system you have multiple parties with multiple interests. And uh, in, in that aspect, I mean, technology is kind of the arbiter between. Right? That needs to make sure that, that all, uh, yeah, that to provide security for everybody, right? So, so in, in, in that sense, you have, if you look at a device, you have the user of the device uh, with security and privacy. We didn't talk about privacy yet, but with security and privacy concerns, you might have the vendor that has uh, um, uh, IP in there that might be one of, that, the, the, that he or she might want to protect, and you have farther down in the supply chains multiple people with interests. And as more and more devices start calling home all the time, right? So you you have uh, various parties with various interests in in, in all kinds of devices. Mm -hmm. So it's not a term that that's just for one party. Thank you. Anyone want to add something to that? I'm, 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 please, Marcus. I think we have to divide uh, between different views of cybersecurity. One is uh, that what we maybe all know about cybersecurity for end users, uh, which uh, covers cybersecurity for your personal PC, the network of a company, and so on, and cybersecurity for um, part of our round here. Um, products itself or for basic technologies like integrated circuits and so on. Um, so, yeah, that's different mm -hmm. fields. Thank you very much. Happy so far? If you want to add something, I'm, I'm happy that we get the base that's right. <laughs> <laughs> if we get the groundwork right, the panel is going to be amazing. If we mess it up, it's like a house. <laughs> if, if, if we don't build a good base, but it's just going to go. If you're all happy, gentlemen, 100% of you are happy. You're still inhaling, you're like, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd add one additional thing. It's uh, that the, uh, the consumer has one additional stake in, in IT security, and that's um, uh, changes he don't want to get mm -hmm. with updates. So um, I'm thinking of, for example, Samsung pushing or forcing ads onto TVs that's, that were already bought. It's not strictly an IT security topic, but it's a change to the system a user don't really I presume don't want. So it's for a consumer, I think it's part of, an, of the security equation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because to follow up, it's, it's an interesting point. I'm going to start feeding in the first audience question with the most upvotes, and that's do people understand that they need cybersecurity? All the experts are going, But I think it's a good question. I mean, there's probably people that are fully aware of that and other people who are like, I'm, I'm good. I don't look at dodgy internet stuff and I only use random USB sticks people give me and I just occasionally <laughs> fill out horoscopes who says, who is your mythical animal on Facebook? <laughs> Which is always great where people say, look, look, I found out who the mythical animal is and all they wanted is all my data. And you're like, Quick question. Christmas is around the corner. How many of you have to, on a regular basis, help relatives remove elements from their browser bar? Do you know that, when they can all hold browser bars effed up? Just raise your hand who has to do that. Be honest. <laughs> who of you has a browser bar that long and uses Explorer? Okay. Okay, but let's let's get back to that. Okay, the, the, the question was it's just it's just always the same. Um, do people understand that they need cybersecurity? And let's let's large that because obviously you said we'll have to take a B2B and a B2C approach. Um, obviously normal security, let's say we have a facility, people understand we have to protect it from burglars and we have to protect it from fire and we have to protect it from flooding and so people have a certain level of common sense. Do people have a common sense understanding of some of the challenges out there or not? And it's not my question, it's the audience question. <laughs> mm. I think there, yes. is, there is a Good. certain awareness. I, I, I think everyone understands that there might be a risk, um, but everyone deals with it in a different way. Some for sure ignore it, but some people take it very serious, and a lot of people hope that the system will fix it for them anyway. Oh, good. And 
which is a risky approach. Oh, good. <laughs> so it's like people say, no, no, I'm good, I've done my research, my immune system is going to get it sorted. I've bought a new iPhone and therefore it's everything fine. Great, because interestingly, just to add a second question to the mix which just came up, the audience is really good on this, what <laughs> examples of cyber attacks are particularly frightening? So let's say, okay, are people aware of it and what's some of the dangerous stuff people should know? Let's just... And could you repeat the question? Yes. What, what examples of cyber attacks are particularly frightening? The crazy stuff. Yeah, I think uh, there are plenty of examples in the media, right? So the... the blackout, so give us some good stuff. Ransomware, right? Yeah. So the, the, the classical thing, my company is down for two weeks. Uh, I, have to, <sighs> I have to pay money to, to, to get it up again, or I have to, to, I, I have to take the decision whether... Uh, yeah, I, I, I pay money or I... I have a good sysadmin that brings me back to life within... But, but do you think that, 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 let's say, a typical um, SME owners, whatever industry, let's just ignore that for a fun fact, or let's say even top-level management of large corporations are aware of the level of risk that they're, they're looking at, or is it still early days? No, they are definitely aware of it, um, at least the big companies. Uh, when I look back uh, 10 and 20 years, uh, cybersecurity or IT security, formerly they call it IT security, um, was uh, a cost factor and not a given uh, uh, function of, of the organization. And this changes a lot. Um, it is the same like, like uh, data security or, or uh, uh, backup systems. In big companies, uh, whenever it happens something with data, then uh, the management is uh, aware of doing something for their IT departments. And uh, what changes in that mind is that cybersecurity, the big number of cybersecurity incidents drive them to uh, be prepared. Uh, for the SMEs, there is the great uh, challenge that they do not have the money. Uh, most of the time, they are aware of it, so they are a little bit in fear. Um, and uh, on the other hand, therefore, the government is starting to implement uh, organizations like the Digital Innovation Hub uh, South to um, support SMEs on their way for a, a cyber secure company. Whoever wants to add, go for it. Marcus, you're inhaling. Yeah, I think a lot of our SMEs are facing now the actual threats like ransomware attacks. Uh, they are reading in the newspaper, uh, watching in TV, that their competitors or partner companies were um, hacked from an external hacker or uh, infiltrated by ransomware. And so um, they, they got more uh, awareness about, about these challenges. And uh, I think for most of them, it's hard to start to make the first step uh, if you have done it, uh, not done it yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just want to touch two things. Number one, what's ransomware? A ransomware is a attack mostly with malware, uh, where the attacker tries to um, mostly encrypt your data and you got a ransom from that, you have to pay money that uh, he give you an encryption key that you can decrypt your data. Okay, so a typical thing would be I have the webcam pictures of mm, random people pay 10 mm, bitcoins. More and more production and industrial firms, companies are uh, hit by them. Uh, for example, there were several examples also in Austria. Give us one, give us one, come on. You don't need to name, give names, but give us a feeling uh, for what we're a, talking about. A big, um, a big milking uh, company in, um, in Salzburg. <laughs> I <Nobody laughs> <knows, laughs> I would guess. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, there are several companies. A lot of them would not um, um, tell that the, the, in public that they were uh, compromised. Um, that's another problem. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the hotel was also in the media, they have locked the access system and so on. I remember, there are yes. multiple examples, yes. <laughs> because the funny thing is, I, I have the feeling a lot of people aren't really talking about it too much, and therefore the awareness is rather low, but the security threat is extremely high, I would assume. And I have a feeling that, as, as, as you've pointed out, a lot of, let's say, specific, specifically the SMEs, are slightly overwhelmed where to start. Because, so, 
let's, let's assume we were like a, a, a family office running a couple SMEs. What's like a good point of entry to just kind of understand where we're at and what we could do? Heavy breathing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah for example, we, we released a few weeks ago a, a small handbook uh, exactly for uh, SMEs uh, to give them an easier entry to the first steps of uh, how they can build up their cybersecurity level. Uh, and um, there we have some practical tips. Um, for example, um, one of our uh, major tips is um, get, at the first step you, you have to get an overview about your infrastructure and your assets that you run and your uh, used software as well as hardware and so on. This, uh, this is the basis of your planning and for the architecture and design of your security system. Uh, and you do not have to do that um, completely manually or with an Excel sheet. There are many solutions out there. Uh, they can assist you with automated uh, retrieving of data and can give you an overview of your infrastructure. So this should be the starting point. And at least, um, same important is that you if you have it not now, uh, that you implement a dedicated role within your company, uh, regardless if you are a smaller company or a bigger company, if that is a, a part-time employee or a full-time employee, but it should be a dedicated person that can focus on the topic cybersecurity uh, and has not cybersecurity on their desk uh, in common with 10 other, other topics and should, uh, should uh, think about it beside their normal daily business. Which company size should I have when I should start thinking about employing someone for cybersecurity, a dedicated role? What's like the minimum size? Gentlemen, you're the experts. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give me a feeling, like everyone, like one person company should have someone, or 10 people, 50 people, 100 people, anything with a computer, as anything with a television? As most of our, of our answers, I think it's more, it depends more on this, the type of company, which, um, how do you use IT, how uh, business critically is IT for you? Um, have you got a fully automated production line where you do not need uh, 100 employees, but everything is fully automated and you rely on your uh, IT and OT systems, then you definitely need someone who is uh, considering all the cybersecurity. To follow on that, so you're basically saying if your company or your business model or whatever you do relies on data, you should have someone, right? Assuming right. that, probably sooner or later, every company and every business model will in some form or function rely on data. So we're saying right now there's a couple of companies that need to have it and a couple that should have it and a couple that will soon need it, right? So I'm seeing inhaling over there. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, because you were asking when do you need a dedicated person for it, I mean, there's like you need cybersecurity from the first instance on, right? Because you always have data, but you might not need a dedicated Good. person for it, but you need to have an understanding of security from, uh, there is, I think, no company where you don't have any data, mm -hmm. right? So, so I, I know, I was just curious to hear that from you. <laughs> but you might not need a dedicated person just because you have... Uh, and there are multiple ways to address it. A dedicated person, a dedicated team, a company who is doing this for you, who is providing the service to you, which is maybe for smaller companies anyway, the better approach. So there, are, there are multiple ways to address it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we're seeing, maybe just to summarize it on that point, cybersecurity is not optional, it's something we need to have, but it for, depends on business model, form, function, blah, blah, blah. Okay, mm -hmm. that we've established that, I'm, I'm quite happy. If you'd have to give, um, on an Austrian level, whatever company, I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care, but just a school mark, how good we are doing in an overall society on cybersecurity from one to five, and five being, yeah, not really very good, and one is, you're fantastic. No comments, just a school grade. Just that we get a feeling where we are, what would you give us? We can start with you if you like, and we'll just work <laughs> our way down, or vice versa. Um, three. Okay, three. No explanations. <laughs> no, 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 come I mean, there, are, there are different answers to this question, right? So, yeah. so, so because <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You, you are relating this now, right? So because I mean, from the scientific point of view, 
I would all give us a five, right? Because I would uh -huh. say we have so much work to do. We need to get so much better. Um, that's very so, so. There's so much to do because technology needs to get so much better. So, so I think we're, we're at the low level. We need to get way, way better than we are at the moment, right? Also in terms of usability and so on. This is, a, let's say, a provocative statement, but I'm but I think that. there is a lot of, of things to do. But and then there is the question of how do we relate to the rest of the world, right? So you can say, uh, I just wanted to have a scale from one to five, and I just compared all, all countries against each other. Yeah. There, I don't really have a. Str uh, yeah. I guess we are somewhere in the middle, right? So we're saying, okay, so you're saying a three, you're saying also a three, but however, on a, on a, on a, on on technological score, score well, crap. Okay, good. I'm j just trying to get an understanding, a bearing. So we average and crap. Okay, good. Mm. I'd give us a nice try, a four. A four. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and you mean cybersecurity within the enterprise world and not the this. Uh, normal uh, society. Yes. I would also give a free because there's always room for improvement, mm -hmm. but also um, there were made a lot of progress within the last years and a lot of awareness. I'm liking that. One more score to give. Sorry? One more score. One more score from my point. Um, it could be in between two to five. Okay. Um, uh, it completely <laughs> dif is different in which sector you're looking in. Of course. Uh, yeah, but this is really important. When you look at uh, automotive, as an example, automotive industry, uh, you will find very high standards, at least as th at the higher tier ones, tier 0.5s. Um, they need it, uh, otherwise they wouldn't get any contract from their uh, OEMs. And uh, when you look in, in other classical sectors, um, maybe the uh, production environment is more flexible or open, uh, and they are not that aware of cybersecurity. So I would rate them at a lower point, but uh, for the um, uh, production environments with a uh, high intellectual property issue, uh, you will find uh, four to five. Mm. As an entrepreneur, I would say there's a lot of room in that space. That's fantastic. <laughs> now. I'm getting a feeling for it. I'm liking that. Now, next most popular question is from the audience. What role do quantum computers play in cybersecurity today? Now, we're taking a big jump. Oh, just now we heard technology is not very good. Now, let's take the other side and talk about quantum computing. <laughs> but it's not my question, audience question. <laughs> He's going, oh, God, where have I ended up? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Whoever feels obliged. I mean, they, they, they are essentially a, a, an upcoming threat, right? So they, they're and drive uh, innovation in or research in particular in the context of uh, of crypto research, for example, because uh, there is the imminent threat. If somebody can build a large quantum computer, we have a problem. So we we need to change our crypto. Um, so basically, it's a, it's currently a driver, but but in terms of uh, particular threat at the moment, we are not there yet. Mm, yeah, it, it, it's a future threat, but it's also impacting our products today because we already prepare products for exactly an area where a quantum computer could get available. So there is a lot of standardization currently going on um, on how those algorithms should look like in future or will look like. And we will soon see what we have to implement. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Anyone want to add anything to it? I'm also yeah. happy to make it more quick fire. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, it was mentioned already that uh, the important point is when do we have enough uh, computing power uh, on the quantum side? Uh, I think uh, internationally we are all trying to be prepared when this point comes reality. Mm -hmm. Wild guess when that happens? Because I mean, there's a lot of investing happening. I know, I know. Don't ask me, ask uh, <laughs> the IBMs and Amazons and go. <laughs> Time frame. I mean, just uh, out of fun. Not, not lower than 10 years, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Happy with that? The same day when there is this fusion, uh, fusion uh, electricity uh -huh. thing. What is this called? Yeah, I know what you mean. Can fusion. Mm -hmm. The same day it will happen. Good. That's, that's fine. <laughs> same date. We'll take it from you as granted. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. Just, just to put some fun into it, um, what is the currently the biggest cyber security limitation? Because I think it makes more fun kind of currently kind of thing, and we'll see how we kind of condense it together into one storyline. 
That's what I need to do. <laughs> so no pressure on you. Lord. What's the biggest limitation right now? I, I have a very clear guess, but I'm not the expert. <laughs> I did not manage to make it invisible. The top management make it invisible? No, no, the implementation. No, you yeah, have to at the end, people have to do something for yeah. it. They have to do a lot for it, and it's quite complex sooner or later. And the biggest limitation is that we did not manage to make it so invisible that it's automatically there. Mm -hmm. You'd have to build upon that. You mean so, so, so it's not convenient enough? Exactly, yeah. Ah, and that's kind of the biggest limitation. So that's interesting. So cyber, if cybersecurity were well, more convenient... From a technology point of view, there is a lot available. We can, we, can, we can do a lot, we can build a lot. And I think the technical understanding is there, but we did not manage to get it into products, into services in a way that it's easily and conveniently used. Now, I'm curious on that because for me, I, I come from, from the marketing field and, and I spent the last 10 years in tech. And usually in tech it would be, um, so in the startup field, people would build a product and once the product is finished, they would come to marketing people and say, now you do your marketing stuff. <laughs> you say, but dude, it's a finished product. What, what do I do? Good. Why is it red? Don't know. Okay, so just invent something. Obviously, other companies, for example, like Apple, they have the marketing department right next to the devel development department, and they intertwine the whole process. Is that also something where you're saying would make a lot more sense to obviously build systems with cybersecurity in mind and not at the end have a finished system? And yeah, you can anyway not do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. To give it to the security guys afterwards is, is, is nice, but they will not be successful. <laughs> and I saw some nodding over there, like three guys going, yes. <laughs> But whenever you have a company that offers you the, the, the solution, so just do this and your product will be secure, then you should be, your alarm, the alarm exactly. should ring. Oh, that's good. That's a good learning. So if you have a company that says, look, with three clicks, you're a millionaire, a millionaire but your, your company is secure, run. Fast. Good. <laughs> We've established that. Um, anything else to add to the biggest lim limiting factor? Because I think convenience is, is, is a great argument. I'm happy in that. Anything else? It's, not, it's really also this complexity issue that Wolfgang was mentioning. So, so we haven't found this, this really... Uh, so if we, if we were able to cope with all this complexity, then we can, in the, on the last mile, hopefully also make it usable. <laughs> and on the last mile, you kind of mean like the end user, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. So this is the, the, the last interface, right? So all that we are here, we're mostly stuck in this, let's say, technology stack. Mm -hmm. There is always this last line, uh, last mile you also need to do, right? So this is, let's say, the usability that the, the users then also use this feature and actually... Um, I mean, you can ask the question of how many people here use email encryption, right? So this is the classical question that's... So you're saying the biggest limitation is actually the dude using the machine? No, it's, it's not the biggest limitation, but uh, so this is one of the limiting parts, but we also need to take care of the, of the technology challenges, and then it, there is the last mile on, on top of it, because you were just saying the biggest challenge is like convenience. So I think this is the top thing, but we also have a lot of technology challenges that we need to solve first, and then we can do the, hopefully also the convenience mile, the last step. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm laughing. Currently the most popular question is, I'm, I'm sorry, sometimes I see things I just have to laugh. Whoever wrote that? <laughs> Again, I'm just, how can I protect myself from a Nigerian prince most efficiently? From it. That's what it says. How can I protect myself from a Nigerian prince most efficiently? That's the typical... If you press this link, you're rich. I'm a Nigerian prince. I want to transfer 48 million to your bank account. Please let your CFO know that you're rich by tomorrow. And people are like, yeah, that could actually, yeah, might as well. <laughs> that's basically what you're saying, right? Like that's, you said it in a polite way, how do we protect the last mile? And then there's people who say, oh, look, listen, boss, someone sent me an email from Nigeria saying they want to transfer 50 bitcoins. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's I mean, just a I mean, question. There, 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 there are some things technology can't solve, right? Ah, I like your dry sense of humor. Um, by the way, the next question, just to, again, I'm just, I'm just a messenger. Um, will the next, in brackets, and this lot has upvoted it, it's, again, not me. Will the next blackout in Austria happen due to ignoring cybersecurity? <laughs> There's a lot of implications in that question, right? <laughs> Was the, well, yeah, when was the previous one? I don't know. I'm, I'm just... We can, we can also... Let's let... I make the rules. I'm the moderator. We can also say you can dodge one question. 
but it has to be in a dem dem democratic order. By raising your hand, you say, no, we don't want to do that question. You just have to raise your hand. <laughs> Only raise for... <laughs> if you don't want it, raise your hand. So you want it. You want to answer the question with a blackout. Okay, good, then we'll do it. I don't know where I was... <laughs> I was just going to say, if all of you would kind of... <laughs> Raise their hand and say, no, I do not want to answer that question. Yeah, I do not want to answer that question. <laughs> that's 20%. That's the other 80% want to answer it. All of you, five? It's all speculation, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's, do we have something which is maybe more? Yeah. Um, let's see. When can a company consider itself protected, sufficiently secure? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good question, but I know it, the answer will be it depends. Mm. Never. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Security is always an ongoing process. But that's funny. It's actually a running battle, isn't it? You kind of plug one hole, and someone s finds something, and that's why you need also have sufficient people, right? Many, um, many security vulnerabilities also uh, come because uh, things have changed, and you need the process to track those changes. Otherwise, security vulnerabilities are the, uh, the, the result of it, so there can't be an end. Someone's actually obsessed with the blackout thing. Someone says, how close are we to a total blackout? Yeah, quite yeah. close. Buy beans, <laughs> batteries, and a water filter. You'll be good. No, it's just a joke. Um, but out of, out of all fun and games, how, is there maybe some kind of a scoring system or something where people can assess their companies just to understand where they're at? I mean, there are, there are ways to do assessments. There are companies specialized to do those assessments, penetration testings, and, and whatever possible. On the other hand, is this a guarantee that you stay secure? Uh, no, it's not. That you know everything about your network, about the applications? No. There might be new attacks coming up, and you somehow need to have a process in place to react in time afterwards. So it's not a static thing. Madam Curious, let's just play, let's play a game be be before we kind of uh, uh, come, come to the end of this panel. Assuming we together, all of six, would inherit a, a company tomorrow. I don't know, whatever, a, a, a nice, decent SME. H how would you go on about trying to assess where they are and what would be some of the initial first steps? Just that we kind of give this whole conversation to someone else. Because obviously the questions are, let's say, not not like cutting edge cybersecurity, but rather more basic, which I think is cool. And it gives an understanding maybe where also the audience wants to go is, why do we start with this? How do we start? How would you start on this? If, you, if all of you are like one step to take, what's the first thing you would do? Tomorrow morning you, you walk into the office and this is what you do after getting a coffee. Marcus. I would, because it's the cheapest and fastest way, I would uh, get the people on board. I would um, initiate training programs for the people to uh, increase their awareness about cybersecurity and so on. Um, yeah, because every technical measure you will implement could not work uh, if you have not the people on board. I like that. So step one is we try and look at the, let's call it human potential and then upscale Okay, step one, I'm liking that. Step two, what do we do next? Asking the IT guy how much money he has spent last year on the security. That's a good one. Okay, so you say, IT guy, how much did you spend on security? Mm-hmm. Good. What's the next thing we do? That's step two. I'm liking that. I would do, uh, as um, <laughs> um, Wolfgang mentioned before, you have several uh, opportunities to get a uh, picture of how is your security at the moment. You can do an audit, you can do a pen test with an external vendor, for example. Um, yeah, that I would do such kind of audit or pen testing so that we see how is the level at the moment and where it should it be. Mm -hmm. What are our weakest points? And then whatever comes up, then you decide. Or is there another step which you would critically take then? Is there like a fourth step, or would you say already that seems feasible? And then you have all the doing steps. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So basically, we're saying that basically we could take three steps. Number one is try and train the people we have. Number two is talk to the IT guy or girl and say how much have you actually spent, which is potentially bad when they say well, not much, like yeah. fifty bucks. 
<laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. And then obviously to audit or benchmark where we're doing, right? And then take it from there. Okay, I'm quite liking that. But, but just from the scale Please. point of view, because I did on purpose not answer, because I mean from the scientific point of view, you, you see that the metrics that we're using here, the steps we're using there, this is like a, we try to create a common understanding of, of, of a security level and you can then say, yes, I'm somehow in the state of the art or I'm doing what is, let's say, currently the best effort you can do. But, but there are so many questions open, right? And so this is why uh, I emphasized this also before, right? So we are missing this, this scale, right? And we, we can then say, yes, if you do this and this and that, and we can reach this level. But from a scientific point of view, we are not really happy about this state, right? And, and try to, to work on, on finding mechanisms to find harder guarantees in, in the end, actually, because you always have this brutal answer then when you say, can you ever be secure? We on the panel, we sit here and say, uh, you can't, and this is a completely unsatisfying answer. And, and of course. No, I, 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 I fully understand, but I thought kind of at this panel, I, I do kind of like that hands-on approach, and then obviously we can, we can add to it. I know that's um, quite agricultural, what we're doing right now, Not, no offense, but, it's, <laughs> but sometimes needs must, you know how it is. We just hit it with a hammer if it doesn't work. Um, that's quite fine. Now, Obviously, the time is flying, and, and, and what I like is obviously you may have seen it throughout the day that I always thought it would be super nice when people at the end always define something what they see, see as a moonshot, like in, in, in the spirit of the great JFK where they say, okay, this is a target, something I would, I would like to work towards, something I would like to voice, which is maybe today still very difficult, but by voicing it, it becomes tangible. Um, something where you say this would be great, and again, just to, to relive the quote, we basically said in 1962 that by the end of the decade he would like to put someone on the moon, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And I, and I love that element of the quote, because everyone goes like, ah, that's difficult, let's not do it, let's not mention it. No, no, let's mention the stuff that's hard. You get like a minute or something to think about, you're smart, you can do that. Um, and I'll try and summarize this um, rather interesting panel where we kind of <laughs> deviated from A to Z to two to five. Um, but that's also interesting, so we kind of understood that cybersecurity is obviously something that we all have to look into, and we understood that the big question is obviously protecting, not just protecting data, but protecting access to data. It's a question, how do we secure something over a lifetime? Um, we need to define what are we actually protecting, um, and understood that cybersecurity is not cybersecurity, but has a 10 million different forms and functions. Um, we understood that there's a certain level of awareness, a high level of awareness was in large corporates, but in SMEs there might be awareness, but very often not the funds or the people. Um, we understood that there's various different attacks going on, um, and we tried to kind of make it more tangible. We said you need to have someone within your organization who is a dedicated lead on this topic, no matter what size it is, you need someone who has that. Um, we understood it's very, very difficult to actually put standards on there. There's like not just a random test you could do, no UMTC Ankov's test where you say you scored 89, you're great, but that might actually make it a little bit tr uh, tricky and, 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 and difficult. And in that we kind of came to the conclusion that specifically convenience could be somewhat of a bottleneck because if something is not easy, not fun to do, people don't do it. Um, we understood that there's, a, as you said so aptly, the complexity of the last mile or rather, actually people using the devices are somewhat <laughs> the limitation in this. We try to take this, as I just called the agri agricultural approach, in assuming we where to start at zero, where should we start, and was with training. Uh, and then obviously trying to understand what's happening, what's going on, and then um, we would take it from there. However, I think we're able to decide that cybersecurity is not optional, but it's something everyone has to look forward to, uh, has to, has to look into, has to take into the equation. That's not a nice add-on but it's something that has to ideally be structured deeply in the DNA of a product and or a company. It's something you don't do at the end on top, but probably on day zero when you start. That's kind of my summary. You happy? <laughs> You're happy? Time for some moonshots, that's fantastic. Now I'm curious, whoever would like to start can go. The interesting thing is with this moonshot topic is whoever goes first has a, an open playing field. If you go last, well, potentially all the good stuff has been taken. No pressure, and the best thing is you get 30 <laughs> seconds per moonshot. I have a quick, I have a sh uh, Go for it. It's basically waking up and having enough people with this, in this domain, 
and at the universities to really build a proper cybersecurity environment and ecosystem. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> not, not my turn. Okay. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that could be fitting. But I, I'm picking up something Wolfgang said before. Uh, it's really about making, uh, making cybersecurity... I mean, it's important that we focus now and that we build this ecosystem and, and that we, we, we get it going. And, and, but, but then, in the end, we want to make it invisible again, right? So we want to make it... It should be something that is naturally just there. And, and we, on the technology side, we need to get there, that it's just there and, and loses its complexity. I like that. Who else would want to go next? Uh, as a moonshot, I'd say uh, it's the, the one thing I'd always say to customers that the uh, endpoints or the, the consumer hardware should be protected in such a good way that uh, starting a malware doesn't matter. So if you start it, it just can't do anything. And you close it and that's it. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a, a really huge moonshot. I like that. Thank you. Um, I would also choose a people thing. Um, I would suggest to bring basic IT skills as well as cybersecurity skills and so on more into our educational system so that uh, younger childs are growing up with those skills and could decide the, the difference of a bad email and a good email, uh, could decide which measures they should take for uh, securing the level. The, improving the level of cybersecurity of their systems and so on. And this will also help us bringing more people into the business of cybersecurity because we need more uh, cybersecurity experts, not only in Austria. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, beside the issue on the uh, resources, uh, I would say to separate uh, cybersecurity from economic uh, driven issues, since most of the um, Incidents coming up uh, are mainly driven by um, money. Uh, so when, when, when we are going in the direction as a society where we separate these issues and see data privacy as a general right, then uh, we would be happy. Thank you very much. Big thank you to our panel. If you liked it, give them some applause. Thank you.